Father in heaven, I'd like to ask you a blessing to your wife right now. Fill us with your spirit. Separate from our hearts. Our sinful thoughts. And our sinful desires. Please create in us a clean heart. And a right spirit. For this we ask in Jesus. Amen. So we're going to look at the uh, parable of the Samaritan. And I'm going to teach you how to study parables. So um, when you study parables, the theme is normally um, the, the theme is normally in the conversation that Jesus has before the parable. The theme of the parable is, in, is, is in the conversation, in the discussion that he has before the parable. So if you go to Luke chapter 10, verse 25, you will see a conversation between Jesus and a lawyer. And he asks Jesus two questions. What is the two questions? What must I do to gain eternal life? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Who are the characters in order in the story? 
นั่นในเรื่องราวนี้เนี่ยมีตัวละครตัวไหนบ้าง Give me the first character บอกอ่าไทยมีชายคนหนึ่งใช่ไหม We will call him the victim คนนี้อ่า victim ใช่ไหม Give me all the give me all the actions or the descriptions of the victim Give it to me in order. So, what is the first thing he does? Went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He went down from Jerusalem. To Jericho. What else? Fell among thieves. What else? He got hurt. Yes. Okay. He got robbed. Right. Okay. What else? What else did they do other than rob him? Yes, they beat him, they robbed him. What else? Look at the descriptions. Give me an order of all the descriptions about him. Stripped him. Stripped of? Of what? His raiment. What else? Is there anything else? Left half dead. Okay, let's. Uh, I think that's it. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Like? Is there anything else like? No. Okay, let's move on. Next character. Priest. Before the priest, we have the thieves. Oh. And the thieves, what did they do? They attack the victim. But I think it also says they lie in the wait, right? Or something like that. They what? They lie in wait or they hide in. So does it say about the actions of the thieves? Does it say anything? Fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed. Okay, so we'll just we'll just say that he attacked. They attacked the victim. Okay. The third character is the priest. And I'll also put the Levi there, and give me the descriptions of the three priest and then the Levi. What did the priest do? Sorry? Sor? The man? And then? Pass by on the other side. Okay, what about the Levi? And then what did he do? He looked. He looked upon, right? Yeah. And then I saw him on the other side. Do let me know if I'm missing any descriptions, okay? Because it's important for you to list out all the little instructions. Satisfied with the priest and the Levite? Yes? Okay, let's move on. Who's the fourth character? The Samaritan. The Samaritan. Okay, tell me about the Samaritan. Give me the descriptions in order. Sword, the 
victim. How he came came where he was. And then how came up? How was it denied? He was. Well, what was it? He had what? He had he had compassion. He had compassion. Okay. And then what did he do? Now, after that, how come the child suffered from the pain of pain? Went to him. He went to the victim and then what else did he do? Bandage his wounds. Bandage his wounds. What else did he do after that?
What raiment is this? So what do we call a person who is going from the church into the city of sin and loses his robe of righteousness? What do we call this type of person? What do we call a person who's in the church and he's going up? What do we call it? Backslider. Backslider. Thank you. So this is a backslider. And what do we call the thieves? What do we call the thieves? Satan's people. What do we call the Levites and the priests? Let's look at the attributes here. Let's look at the attributes. What do we call it? Well, what kind of people? They're the people who saw the victim. But it must be on the other side. So what do we call this? But what by their actions, what do we call them? There are people in the church with no. Let's contrast them with the Samaritan. No compassion. No compassion. No compassion. No compassion. That's what when you do it silently and just look upon the person in their was and walk away. That's so hard to get that scared thing and for sure. the religious, the religious leader. Just make sure that you don't jump to applications okay. before you observe and interpret first, right? Yeah, right. The, yeah. Uh, so yes, you don't to make I mean good application. But study all the facts and the knowledge first. So tell me, who is the Samaritan? Why? What clues do we have here that help us to see that the Samaritan is Jesus? When he saw the victim, he was filled with compassion. When we heard this word, Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Okay, Mark chapter 1, verse 41. But not only was he filled with compassion, what did he give to the man? He gave him oil and he gave him wine. Which represents Holy Spirit. But the oil and the wine represents blood of Jesus. So what were the two things that Jesus gave to every one of us? His blood. And then when he went to heaven, he gave us his holy spirit. And then what does he do? He puts the man on the on his beast. And he brought it to the innkeeper. <coughs> So we know that the Samaritan is Jesus. 
Who's the innkeeper? The church. church pastor. <laughs> the church. No, in is the church. Sorry? In is the church. Or innkeeper in the church pastor. <laughs> it's the church members. <laughs> church pastor. <laughs> but. So notice in this story, there's a distinction between the priests and the Levites and the innkeeper. That's, that's the comparison. You can study the commentary in Christ Object Lessons. But Ella White chooses not to talk about the innkeeper. That's why I'm saying that there are new, uh, that's why she says there are new veins of truth yet to be discovered. God, uh, God chose Ella White to give us more light but not more light. So what does the innkeeper, uh, what does the deposit represent? What is the deposit that Christ gave to the church? Because Jesus says to the church, take care of the victims. I'm going to give you a deposit. When I come back, I'll give you the rest. What's the rest? What's the rest? Eternal life. Uh, what is the rest that he will give to? What is the deposit? Okay. And what's the rest? The rest is salvation or eternal life. What's the rest that he will give? Because he's going to go away when he comes back. What's the rest that he's going to give to us? So the rest is salvation. But what's the deposit? His promises. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And let's go to verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession Unto the praise of his glory. So that word there in verse 14, earnest, E-A-R-N-E-S-T, earnest. If you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, that word earnest of our salvation, this is what it says, money which in purchases is given as a pledge or down payment 
that the full amount will be subsequently paid. So the Holy Spirit is the deposit of our salvation. The Holy Spirit, sorry, is the deposit of our inheritance. So the Holy Spirit was given to the church. As a deposit. As a down payment so that we would do the work. So let's make some applications. Everyone clear on the interpretation? Do you see how important it is for you to observe every point in Many times, I'm sure most of you have studied the story and you think it's just about the Samaritan. This studying the parable this way allows us to pick up actually the English is pretty important too. In this story, we are the innkeeper. So let's make some applications. Jesus is the Samaritan Greek. What's the role of the Samaritan? What's the role of the Samaritan? Sorry? Saving. Saving, yes. But what does he do? From the context of the story, focus on the story. Don't, let, don't think of new things. Right? Sacrifice. From what's being described to us, what is the role of the Samaritan? In the whole context of evangelism now, okay, I want you to think about this, right? In the context of evangelism, what is the role of the Samaritan? To meet the needs of the victim. No. In the whole context of evangelism, think about this. What is the role of the Samaritan? Is it to bring to the end? Exactly. The Samaritan is to bring the victims. You know what we do today? We spend so much of our time trying to do the role of the Samaritan. All of our church life is, and, and the leader's church life is spent thinking, what's the new, latest, greatest way that I can bring people into the church? Social media evangelism. Social media. Video evangelism. Video. Television evangelism. All sorts of new channels we're always trying to open up. But what's the role of the innkeeper? What's the role of the innkeeper? To make sure that we can take care of the victims that the Samaritan brings. What qualifies the innkeeper to take care of the victims? Deposit. 
on what basis would you, as the innkeeper, take care of the victims? If you have deposit. How do you get the deposit? Yes, but what do you need to do? Ask, and you shall receive. So what qualifies us to get the deposit if we ask? And what is asking? Prayer. But other than asking for the deposit, when the deposit is given, how does the deposit work? What are the tools of the Spirit? Exactly. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. And verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. It says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So in order for us to receive the deposit, we need to ask. You know? So before we do any evangelism, think first, am I a praying church? Am I a praying church? So, uh, first ingredient is prayer. But in order for you to receive the Spirit, you got to have two pens. What does the two pens represent? We know that it's the Holy Spirit. But Why two? Well, we've already connected the fact that the Spirit uses the sword, and the sword is the Word of God. And in the book of Revelation, the Word of God is, ref uh, is referred to as the faithful witness. In the book of Revelation, it is referred, the Bible is referred to as faithful witness. So, what is the faithful? And it's referred to as the also the two, two witnesses. And what does the two witnesses represent? So in order for us to qualify as the innkeeper, we need to be a praying church. We need to be a church that studies the Bible. It's no wonder that our churches are empty. Because God doesn't need us to do the work of running around and finding people. God needs us to do the work of preparing our hearts so that we can take care of them when He brings them in. And our churches are dying 
Our churches are dying. Because we are dead. And it doesn't make sense for the Samaritan to bring the victims into their ends. Question, yes. I just want to ask a clarifying question. Are you sure. suggesting that we should not be doing any kind of outreach and we should just be praying and studying the Bible? I am saying that we've got our priorities wrong. Right. I am, I'm just... Because yeah. I have worked for churches that do just that, yes. and they don't ever grow as well, and then they hire me to go and reach out to people. And then it works better, but it has to be a combination, I feel, rather than... If they needed you to go in to teach them about evangelism, they weren't studying the Bible and praying properly. But no, no, they were doing perfectly fine. The, oh, okay. Specifically, why they were doing perfectly fine, but they wanted to increase it. Oh, uh, right, yes. I mean, they right. started with 12, so they went to 20. Yeah, so, so the point is, yes, I get your point. Okay. I'm not saying that we don't do evangelism, because we all have to be like the Samaritan as well. Okay, uh, let me yeah, so, yes, I get your point. Um, it's, it's not telling us not to do evangelism at all. However, if we study the life of Jesus, and we look at the Gospels, Jesus never went around going crazy knocking on every single door. Jesus was at the right time, at the right place to do the right thing. But how could he do that? Because he spent a tremendous amount of time asking for the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit guided him to divine appointments. Wherever he moved. There is a story in early writings. Where Sister White has a vision of uh, a group of people picking berries. And she sees that they're furiously picking every berry. And then when she looks into their bucket, majority of them are unripe berries. And uh, the counsel there is that not everyone is ready to receive the gospel. So how do we know who's ready to receive the gospel? A praying and studying church. Because the Spirit cannot work with people who don't pray and don't study the Bible. So what we have today is a bunch of innkeepers with no deposit. And they try to do the work with no deposit. This is what we call righteousness by works. When we have a relationship with Jesus, when we have when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will bring people into this you walk out on the street with no intention at all, the Spirit will put somebody there in your heart. 
So you go to work without any intentions, the spirit will bring somebody to you to ask you the questions. You go to work and somebody will bring up uh, the spirit will bring somebody to you to ask you the questions. This is what we this is what the spirit filled in keeper church should be like. But instead, what our church today is focused on is let me learn all the techniques of being an innkeeper without receiving the deposit. God, let me operate this in. I don't need any of your money. I'll just do it myself. And then we wonder why nobody comes to this thing. If you look at Pentecost, so the disciples didn't have to think about where they were going to find people to hear the message. The disciples had to worry about whether they received the message. Whether they would receive the Holy Spirit. They didn't have to worry about where am I going to go to preach this message. Where am I going to go to find the people to hear this message? They worried about am I worthy to have this message. So the point of the story, I believe, is or the application is we put our priorities all wrong today. We're too satisfied with the status quo, with the normal programs that we do in church. Our salvation almost is based on the fact that we've done all these programs and I feel good. It's a subtle deception that many of us don't realize. And that is that forget about the programs. Receive the deposit. And God will tell you what programs. And even if you had no programs, God will bring the people. Because you're filled with the message. Yes, question at the back. And then
เขามีใจที่ดีมากกว่าเพศเยนหลายๆคนที่หนูรู้จักอีกว่าดีหรือไม่ดี
So when you say, my friends outside in the world love better than the people in the church, why is that? Because God has allowed us to be put up on a pedestal and every little thing about us, good or bad, the universe will see. And as human beings, we always remember the bad things. So the more people that you see, the more time you spend, the, the more time you spend with that person, the more bad things you see, the more bad things you remember. So naturally, everybody else outside looks so much better. Because you spend so much time in here, you just remember the bad things. The other thing that Romans says, in book, uh, Paul says in the book of Romans, he says, I did not know, I did not die until I knew the Lord. I think it's Romans chapter verse 7. So what he's saying here is that I did not know how bad I was until I see the Lord. It's easy to be a nice person, it's easy to be loving and go to the clubs and go and drink alcohol and do all these other things when you didn't know that it's all wrong. When you didn't know it's all wrong. But put the law of God in front of that person. Suddenly that happy-go-lucky loving face might disappear and then they have to struggle with the law. And then, you put, and then you put on top of that the attacks of the devil. And the Christian walk is a struggle. The Christian walk is a struggle. Right. And if we don't receive the deposit, if we don't spend time with Jesus, then we're not going to be a happy person. We're not going to be a happy person. So that's hopefully some little explanation of well, why does it look so good on the outside, inside it doesn't look so good, right? Sure. Sure. You're talking about Christian and the non-Christian. So here, I don't think Samaritan is a Christian because the priest and Levite, they represent Christian. Okay. So the Samaritan is not a Christian. Innkeeper is not a Christian. And that's exactly the point Jesus is making here. Okay. Who is your neighbor? Okay. Who who is the one who is walking and doing his will? It is not the priest and the Levite who is wearing the robe, okay? but it is the one who is doing the will of his father. Okay? So Samaritan and the innkeeper, they both don't seem to be the Jews. They are not Christians. Yeah. 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 So, again, even, yeah, so I, I think to your point, it's big Pasadha. ภาษาไทยนี่เอ่อยูแล้วก็เอ่อลีวายนะครับอันนี้เป็นบัพติสเตียนเป็นเอ่อเซเวนเดย์เบรดเดย์แล้วก็ผู้สเมเรียโอเ
sasnahin dulu pun ada Okay, we'll go to Team Lula and the program, Team Keeper How come it's not a mistake? Go, I need to pray so top, you know, cry, pain Good man, cry, pain, good man Ching, ching, TV, Mom, Rock if we have been Christian, we have been seven days. Food, 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 such a lot of food. But Ching Ching can't be good for the child because they are doing the will of the Father. That's why they are doing the will of the Father. They are doing the will of the Father. Image of God. ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็
คือเรามีแค่ความรู้มากกว่าเท่านั้นแต่ไม่ได้หมายความว่าพวกเรานั้นศึกษาเพียง There are certain people in the history of the Adventist Church who have studied the books แต่ว่ามีในประวัติศาสตร์นั้นมีบางคนในคริสตจักรเซเวนเดซึ่งศึกษาพระคำของพระเจ้ามากเพียงพอ But I dare say, in this room, if we ask ourselves truthfully, many of us may have to admit we don't study the Bible. So the problem is this: everyone assumes that a Seventh-day Adventist is studying more. Because God has given us more light. But many of us are an embarrassment to God. We are an embarrassment to God. Because he, although He has chosen us and He has given us more knowledge, we don't study. But we pretend we study. That's the worst part. Right? We pretend to be fake innkeepers. We pretend to be innkeepers. We walk around like we study, but we don't study. We pretend to be innkeepers. 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 And having a lot of light, more light than the others, uh, could be two different things. Some people study only not much, already know. You ask everything, no, he knows everything. That means have the light. Okay? And some people study a lot, doesn't understand. So, studying and also having the, the light and the knowledge is uh, two different points. Now, it is way later, but now it's two different. different Two different points, right? Between the word studying and also not studying and also having the light, that means the knowledge, the understanding of the truth. Okay. Right. Sorry. What, what is your? What's so your, your point? The third, the, the third point. Sorry. What's your point from the second one? The, the, the second point is that no, uh, the Sunday Adventist knows a lot already. Now, uh, some study a lot, some maybe does not study a lot, so we know a lot of the truth of the light. You think so? No. We think we know a lot. But if you don't study, you know nothing. Uh, so we can hear sermons and we can repeat what they say, but actually inside we know nothing. เราคิดว่าเรารู้เราคิดว่าเราเข้าใจเพราะว่าเราได้ยินคำเทศนาแล้วเราก็เอาคำเทศนาเนี่ยมาเป็นคำตอบแต่จริงๆแล้วเราไม่รู้ So many of us we walk around we repeat buzz words บ่อยครับบ่อยครับที่เราเอาคำของอาจารย์ที่เทศนาเนี่ยมาเป็นคำตอบให้กับผู้อื่น So we have heard all these things เราเคยได้ยินได้ฟังมาก่อน And we can repeat it เราสามารถพูดได้เป็นเหมือนนกแก้ว But because we haven't studied it, it doesn't change us. And we don't have the character of Jesus. And we give the false impression. That seven day and a study a lot. And they know a lot. But they're not loving. That's completely like that's fake. That's the problem that a fake Adventist gives to the world around us. But the reality, the real, the reality is this. If you have no love. You didn't do. Uh, you didn't. Uh, you, you, if you have no love and you're not doing the work, it's because you haven't studied. And you haven't prayed. I don't need to know your church. 
I don't need to come in and examine your techniques. ไม่ต้องเข้ามาศึกษาว่าพิจารณาคุณมีเทคนิคอะไรในการใช้ If the inn is empty, แต่ว่าถ้าถ้าโรงแรมนั้นว่างเปล่า It's because they have no deposit. ก็เพราะว่าเขาไม่มีเงินมาจับ Simple as that. ก็แค่นั้น You know, God's way is very simple. วิธีของของพระเจ้านั้น Study the Bible earnestly. And pray for the Holy Spirit. I'll take care of it. And when you don't see the results, something's wrong with step one and two. So we don't have to hypothesize about, you know, is there this group of people studying but they have no love? Are they not doing this? Are they not doing that? How can you have this type of person? They don't do this, right? It's really simple. Yeah. So, Sorry. Uh, Point three. Uh, uh, I uh, these two points are very clear. Okay. Yeah. Then it comes to the third point. Actually, uh, the compassion that you ask, you know, to show compassion to others. Yes. You now, uh, uh, most of us only can talk, and yes. uh. And and a third person would look at us, and in their heart they said that, you know, so many hypocrites in the church. Yes. They only talk about infidelity. They are unfair, unjust, you know, hypocrites only. They don't take responsibility. Right. No responsibility. No. So by their works, you shall know them. Right. Yes. Is that right? Exactly. But how? What do you know? By their works, you shall know them. Know what? Yeah. Know that they didn't study the Bible and pray. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So when it's when he says, "By their works, you shall know them." Know what? Know people who are in the Word and pray versus those who have no relationship with Jesus Christ. That's it. It's uh, a simple. By, everything boils down to these two things. I think right? by their works, you shall know them. You can know them whether they. They take responsibility. They are compassionate or not? They care or not? They didn't care. They were one thing. Can only talk enough. Then this is also their works. Sure, but where do you get compassion? It is the character of Jesus, right? There is no good thing in us. Nothing. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, right? So uh, when I look at oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So our righteousness is as filthy rags, right? I don't care how great you look on the outside, how loving you might look. The Pope looks really compassionate as well. And at the very end of time, compassion and love. Is very deceptive. Deceptive. You know, many will follow exactly as you mentioned. They do good things. They look so loving. We should follow them. Ah, will be able to 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 follow them. Is a deceptive thing. It's not so easy for any of us to pick up. Yes, eventually their works will uh, show who they are on the inside, but not every work will is so clear for us to discern. So everything still should be measured to the Lord and to the Testament. Sorry, yes, right. You, you want to say something? Um, well, just in that, I mean, you kind of clarified it already, but you said if they're not having that, they're not studying and they're not praying. But the other factor is, is having that open heart. 
uh, yes. because you can study and pray, but if you're not willing to follow what you see, yeah. you can spend all the time you want praying and yes. studying, but if you're not doing what you, then, then you're still not going to have Exactly, it. yes. But, but studying and praying, so this is the deception that we have been fed in the church, largely because of false Christianity, right? The deception is that I have to do and then it will help me. But the reality is, I have to study and pray, and that will help me do. There is an inward work we need to do to go outward, rather than an outward to come in. Right? So the deception in church that we've been fed, uh, by and large, is the more evangelism you do, the more it will help you with your relationship with Jesus. <laughs> So as a result, everyone feels like, like, how can we just study the Bible and pray? How can we just study the Bible and pray? Don't focus just study Bible and pray. Let's just go out and do But my point is, if you study and pray, the Holy Spirit will move you to do the work. But many of us, especially at the leadership level, and I've experienced this in my life as well, we are too scared. It seems like too much of a risk for us to just focus on Bible study and prayer, and we, we are worried that we'll become Pharisees. But the problem with the Pharisees is not that they study and pray. They had a form of godliness in the church outwardly. And they love to show people, hey, I'm in church and I'm praying. But at home, they didn't do it. So the battle, the struggle that we have as leaders in the church is how do I help all of my members to do their devotion? Because if I don't focus on that, it becomes too easy for everyone to jump into the programs and feel holy. I've done special music for the last 10 years. I've sang at public evangelism. Who are you to tell me that I'm not an authentic artist? I'm a pathfinder and master guide and I've led camperies for the mission of the union for the last 10 years. Everyone has different gifts. Your gift is studying the Bible, my gift is leading pathfinders. I'm sorry if I'm hitting some. What you say, very you say, what he's saying is uh, your gift is the study of the Bible and my gift is pathfinders. So Just how, how can you say that you are better than me? So this is this is the dangerous thinking that we have in the church. And I'm sorry if I'm hitting some kind of controversial areas, but uh, you know we need to see that studying the Bible, everybody has to do. When we get to the judgment hall, Jesus is not going to say, look at how long you were in pathfinders. 
ดูสิคนนี้เขารับใช้ในงานพับไปเริ่มมานานแค่ไหน First แต่อย่างแรก That might be second or third He will commend us for the good works we have done But the authenticity, authenticity of those good works is founded in Did you know Jesus first? แต่ว่าปัจจัยหลักก็คือว่าเรารู้จักพระเยซูพอไหม So I bring us back to this point. We have many innkeepers today with no deposit trying to be an innkeeper. And that's why there is no power in the church. There is no Pentecost. Because we are unqualified innkeepers with no deposit. Sorry, I'm going to stop here because uh, we've gone uh, quite a bit of time. I, I need to stop here and I need to ask. Can, can I? Yes. Can uh, interpreter have a comment? <laughs> yeah, sure. ดังนั้นสิ่งที่บอกว่าเป็นความรักที่ว่าคนอื่นต้องมีต้องมี 
So whether other people have love, those love will come from God too. So let me just address uh, the part about Jesus. When Jesus said, let this cup be removed from you, you have to understand what cup he was talking about. The cup that he did not want to experience is the cup of the wrath of the indignation of God in Revelation chapter, four, uh, four, uh, no, Revelation chapter 14. Verse, uh, we want to the third angel's message. Right? What did it mean for Jesus to experience the wrath of God that will be poured out on the lost? It's separation from God. None of us will ever understand what it was like for Jesus to be separated from the Father. The closest thing that we can think about for me is for me to lose my children. Or to lose my wife. But even more is probably my young children. I could not bear the thought of what it would be like for my child to die before I knew. And so, from both a godly perspective and a human perspective, Jesus was about to experience not an earthly death, a mortal death. Jesus experienced eternal death. And there was fear from the Son of God and the Son of Man because he was both. That's why when Jesus was on the cross, he could not see the Father because he was experiencing eternal death. That's why when Jesus says, uh, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? For God, that is not a mortal death. Because a mortal death for God means nothing. Because He's still alive. For God, for Jesus, the Son of God, to experience just a painful mortal death. For Jesus on the cross, when he said, My God, my God, why is thou forsaken us? He thought he's going to die forever. Because he was experiencing on the cross the wrath of God that is given only to those who will die forever. So in every aspect, as God, as man, when Jesus was on the cross, he could not see into the future. He could not see resurrection. At that very moment at the cross, when he died, he believed he was going to die forever. And he did it anyway. So Jesus was willing at that very moment 
to die for him. For each and every one of us. That is the love of God. So, in that respect, I agree. So, I think we need to understand that. Also, we can't really connect what Jesus did there uh, to his love in uh, non Christian and Christian.
because the situation, although all the promises in the past, yes, he believed, but it was such a test on his belief that he thought at that moment on the cross, he will not. He will just have to die for it. The sins of the world were too much because God put all the sins of the world on Jesus. And he did not want the Father to to the sin. Yes. So it's a perfect right? So he felt that human will be seen the way of God by being telling the way Satan trying to put right in Jesus. Okay, we have to stop here. Uh,